the camera legend YouTube YouTube hey, what's going on you guys it's Sam from camera legend.com back at you today uh, rocking the whole chi right here I'm uh, gonna be talking about a topic that's near and dear to my heart and maybe to yours uh, camera collecting now you guys know um, because you guys are the most educated people in photography all 31 of you you guys know that camera collecting can be very expensive but it can also be very cheap and uh, today I have two cameras that will prove that you can be a camera legend and be very cheap so let's start off the first camera we got today is the Minolta 7000 Maxim 7000 so anyway this is the camera that was introduced in 1985 by Minolta and it revolutionized uh, the world of autofocus photography. It's the first camera to have an integrated autofocus motor inside. Um, and um, it was a huge hit. Uh, but we're not going to be reviewing the camera today. We're just going to be talking about collecting one of these. The second camera I have, which you saw in a previous video, is the Canon EOS 650, which is the very first EOS camera. Uh, and so, for that fact alone, it is a, uh, an important camera, a camera legend. But on today's used market, it's also very cheap. So we're going to try to find out why these cameras are cheap. Well, first of all, the Minolta 7000, uh, as I said, is the camera that revolutionized autofocus. Um, but just like the EOS 650, uh, both, of, both of these cameras are actually very important uh, for their time but in many ways they haven't stood the test of time as far as how people perceive them and how people value them uh, which makes them very cheap on the used market. Um, they both have uh, I believe a uh, top shutter speed of 1 2000. They both have program mode, aperture priority, shutter priority and manual pretty much everything you need. Uh, and they both rely on batteries. The Minolta 7000 relies on four AAA batteries and the Canon EOS 650 relies on one 2CR5 battery, I believe. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, I don't want to review these cameras because there are a lot of fine people who have reviewed them. Uh, and as I said, for me, if I was to review them, it would just be wasting up your space with useless videos. Anyway, we're talking about camera collecting and um, let's start with the Minolta. Um, the reason I believe it hasn't really uh, stood the test of time as far as on being on the used market, as far as the prices, uh, is simply because they become very ugly with time. Um, fortunately for me, I found a very nice one. Uh, let me just give you a good example. This, this kind of uh, covering, the anyway, the covering on these cameras usually become really white and pasty. Uh, I'm sure if, if any of you guys have looked on eBay uh, or anywhere else looking for one of these cameras, you're probably gonna see a lot of like white stuff, white filmy stuff back here too. Usually you see that around there. Another common thing that you always find on these cameras is the LCD goes bad. Like this one, the LCD has gone bad. Uh, sometimes you can use it, but sometimes it, it gets to the point where, you, where it's unusable. This one is still okay. Um, the controls are all there. I mean, to be honest with you, looking back now, I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, it took off the way it did because uh, looking at it now, even even though mine, I you know I hate I don't want to sound like I'm bragging because you can't brag about a cheap camera, but uh, this one is in pretty good condition cosmetically. But just looking at the whole package, the the Minolta 7000 is pretty ugly actually. Looks almost like a toy camera in some ways, kind of like um, those uh, Nimslo or Nashika, something like that. But it feels good. Now the EOS 650, having been released in 1987, a good two years after the Minolta 7000, is quite a bit of a more refined looking camera. Uh, still not the most exciting thing in the world, but very nice, you know, usable. Um, but its claim to fame is the introduction of the EOS mount. So this is the very first camera to take the EOS mount. And um, 
as I said, this this lens mount is legendary. I, so I this mount has proven to be very um, durable, dependable, flexible, and it served Canon well for over 30 years. And I think only now with the release of the EOS R system, the mirrorless system, uh, that Canon uh, has finally said maybe it's time to move on from the EOS mount. But they haven't said that, but it, it appears that way. So anyway, let's talk about why the EOS 650 is not so, um, how do I say it, it's not so well loved on the used market. First of all, it, it just doesn't really inspire any kind of excitement when you look at it. I mean, personally, to me, I don't really get excited. I've got, I've had this camera for, for many years, never, never shot with it once. <laughs> anyway, I mean, why, why would you, really? I mean, if you're shooting with an EOS 1 or 1N or, you know, why would you bother with that? As I said, I'm not going to do one just to make a review uh, to waste up your precious space with that kind of review on these cheap cameras like that. Anyway, uh, but it is historically important, which is what matters. Uh, so anyway, um, again, this camera has up to one 2000 shutter speed program, manual, Aperture priority, shutter priority, everything you need, pretty much. Uh, just the same with the uh, Minolta 7000, plus the EOS mount, which is great. So I do believe that these two cameras would make a great addition to your camera collection, especially if you're starting out. I know you guys want to see the esoteric stuff, and we'll get to that at a, at a later episode. But for people starting, these two are very good cameras very cheap how 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 do they perform the autofocus well first generation what can i say you know first generation you got to expect they both they both actually pretty good considering the the timeline they came out um accurate fairly fast but as i said first generation so if you've used anything else uh any other slr or even dslr uh they're all better than this but they'll get the job done especially if you want to get a flavor for the old school autofocus. All right, so the Minolta, let's talk about prices. The Minolta 7000 prices are trending anywhere from $3 to $35 maybe. I probably wouldn't spend any more than 25 on one of these. As I said, the majority of the time, you're going to have this bleeding LCD problem. Uh, so if you want to get one for your collection, try to get it cheap and from a good dealer. Uh, who, who will you know let you return or exchange if you need to I got this one for three bucks the EOS 650 on the used market goes roughly for uh, about ten dollars to forty dollars I probably wouldn't spend any more than 25 30 bucks on one of these uh, and I don't think you should either anyway uh, with these two cameras I hope that they show you that collecting cameras Collecting camera legends does not have to be expensive. And my name is Sam, and I will see you guys next time on the CameraLegend.com. Should I be nice or YouTube channel? YouTube, YouTube.